Now we have finished browsing the database and discussing its basic structures, it is time to look at the different functionalities by which we can interrogate the database in more detail. These are the next four drop-down menus on the screen, Map, Query, Rank and Compare. And I wish now to look at each of these in turn. Mapping is perhaps the most obvious of these functions, allowing us to look at where books went to or came from and doing something similar with authors, keywords, languages of publication and so forth. So we can even relate where books published in London uh, came to the STN from, for example. Um, so we can understand roots. So, so even under mapping, some really quite complex functionality is possible. In this case, however, I'm going to do a relatively simple map. I'm going to take us back to her favourite book, A quoi sert un titre si l'ouvrage est bon? And we are going to look at where it was sold to, the total sales destinations. We have the option to cover the sales destinations for any time in the STN's history down to increments as small as a single day and also to break down our results in various ways the geographic breakdowns that we've already looked at in this case I'm going to do it by geographic zone and display the results as a map although I do have the option of doing so as a table In this case, we get a simple map uh, showing both the towns to which the book was sent as well as the geographic zones. Um, we can read total scores by hovering over the various places. I now know that Moscow received four of these books. And if I were to want to reproduce this map as a slide, I might choose to hide the towns or to place it in a publication, I might choose to present it in black and white. So there are some complex, if self-explanatory um, functions attached to the mapping and how we visualize it. Our second function that we will look at relates to different sorts of data usually either books or events. In other words, if we wish to do so, we can look at the books bought by a particular economic sector. In this case, I am going to choose members of the clergy, both Protestant and Catholic, and see what their favoured reading taste seems to have been. Of course, we must be aware that some members of the clergy produced vanity publications, and this may explain some of the books at the top with high sales. Le Bon Père, for example, produced by an STN author and sent to him for distribution to his entire flock. This table is broadly similar to the sort of tables we might receive if we were also to use the rank menu which allows us to produce effectively a set of different best-selling tables. For example, if I want to know about subject matter for the books we're looking at, I might choose to go to the Parisian categories menu and decide to use the basic top-level menu as we call it because it's a complex categorization system uh, which will give us um, results in this way. The categories here are familiar to all book historians as the system developed by Parisian booksellers in the 18th century that divided all books into five basic categories Belles Lettres, Histoire, Sciences, Arts, 
jurisprudence, theology, um, and we have an extra section for undetermined, those books for which we had insufficient data to be able to place them into a single category. And with such searches that produce less than 20 results, we even get a pie chart to help us visualize this data automatically. But these are not the only things that we can rank, as you can see. We can look at which economic sectors took most books, to which towns took most books, or we can look at the languages of publication to see which languages of book were supplied by the STN beyond the French language. Our final function, and possibly the most complex, allows us to compare um, a number of things over time. We can, for example, therefore, look at sales of given keywords across the entire history of the database. And on this occasion, I'm going to compare politics with history, and finally, a related category, lives and letters from our list of over a thousand key words. By hitting the compare button I will find myself presented very shortly with a detailed graph of how raw sales figures compared for each of those categories across the entire period covered by the STN database. And perhaps not surprisingly for me we find that there is a surge, particularly in politics, in the period 1782 to 1783, when the STN sales were at their height. Before leaving this tutorial, I wish just to draw your attention to one or two other functions of the database that we will be looking at in more detail in the advanced tutorial aimed at users who want a more sophisticated understanding of the database. First of all, we have a powerful range of options which allow you to search subsets of the database according to the sort of research that you are doing. A summary of these options is provided under the option summary and you may like to look at them in order to see what information can be derived by using searches restricted to certain sorts of editions, client types, uh, illegal or illegal books, languages, and so forth. You may also like to consult the details under help and resources, particularly the user guide, which is relatively short and gives considerable detail on how one can go about searching and the various functions that we have. In addition, you will find there useful information about abbreviations and manuscripts that have been used in compiling the database and the database notes. Or you might like to consider looking at the tools to help you conceive the totality of the database in raw numbers through the database totals, as given here, which tell us the total number of books, the total number of events, the total number of towns and clients, and so forth, or to the visualization gallery, which gives us a range of ways of thinking about aspects of the database visually, ranging from routes to ways of thinking about Parisian categories, both in bubbles and a key map, to a total sales graph divided by area for the STN's total volume of sales, their calendar of their trade down to individual days, and finally, of course, through to their cartogram of sales by year, as shown here, which is active and can be interrogated as a video over time. There is 
in addition a set of free search functions available. A simple search of books, clients or places through which you might search for an individual word appearing, for example, in book fields. I'm going to search for Amour because I feel this might be an interesting way of spending the afternoon. But you could equally search for a large number of things. Clients called Dupuis, for example. If we look at the results for Amour, we'll see many of them have Amour in the title, but there are also equally many of them who don't, at least in the short title. If we click through to La Guerre Civile de Genève by Voltaire, we find, in fact, Amour David Courbet appears in its longer title. Finally, under, hidden under the search button is an advanced edition search. While the search function look, works at the level of books, an advanced edition allows you to ask questions that are specific to an individual edition of a book, uh, whether the name of the translator, editor, and so forth. We might therefore search for Voltaire as an editor and find that he appears in three books, uh, as here. Armed with this range of tools, I hope you will have a great deal of fun searching the STN database and that it will provide useful material for your researches. But there are a number of advanced functions and searches that are available that I think we should look at in more detail uh, if you're intending more serious levels of scholarly searches, particularly to publish any work on the basis of this database. And for that reason, we have an advanced video of tutorial available, of which I hope you will avail yourself soon. Thank you.